We released a poll last week asking the question of whether or not martial arts instructors should be paid to teach. The results were interesting. The topic of whether or not instructors should be paid to teach the martial arts is one I've been following closely and have been reading a lot of what our viewers have mentioned in the comments over the past few years. Now we'll talk about the results of the poll in a moment, but we left it vague in an attempt to create an open-ended discussion, and we weren't disappointed, as there were several points mentioned that are worth considering. We asked if teachers should be paid, and the answers were yes, they need to make a living too, no, that teaching should be an honor, or if they taught as a hobby, then they shouldn't charge. Those who voted for yes generally said that it is a profession like anything else and that teachers have invested their own finances, time, and skill into training and they are passing on a trade and valued skill set and should be compensated for their expertise. Especially if an instructor teaches full-time and is running a full-time school. There are a lot of expenses that come with running a school. You know, besides from the utilities and rent, of course, there are build-out costs. Mirrors are really expensive, signs are expensive, and the prep work to set up a commercial space into a gym or dojo is not a cheap endeavor. Then you have equipment, and depending on the discipline taught, you could have mats, wave masters, kicking shields, hand targets, practice weapons, or in certain schools, wooden dummies, grappling dummies, and other specialized equipment. And then there is insurance. You should not be teaching if you don't have insurance in place. You could be setting yourself up for some serious liability if you don't, especially if you teach children. It takes a lot to keep the doors open. Martial arts schools are one of the harder businesses to keep running, and the majority of them go out of business within their first year or two if they don't get a foothold quickly. The consensus for this answer was basically that if a person dedicates themselves full-time running the school and teaching a skill that they worked hard for and invested in themselves, then they should be compensated like a teacher, coach, or counselor in any other trade would. Then there are those who said no, that martial arts knowledge is an honor and it should not be traded for a dollar, and that a person who is pure in the arts shouldn't even consider money as an objective. This one is a delicate line to walk because there's a lot of gray area here. Some took exception to the martial arts being considered a trade, and that it is passing down knowledge for an honorable cause and it shouldn't be an industry. The idea of a commercial school being open in general is often contested, with many people feeling that teaching should be a smaller private affair and they shouldn't have all that upfront cost to begin with. I mean, after all, there are cheaper ways to run classes, renting out time from an already established school, utilizing recreation centers, or even for free at the beach or the park. Then there is the middle point of someone who teaches as a hobby, or rather part-time. Now, this can apply to somebody who is an assistant instructor and teaches for their instructor, or someone who teaches outside of work hours and does it for the love of it. Most people who responded regarding this aspect suggested that someone teaching part-time or for their instructor should not be paid because teaching is a valuable part of training hours for their own training. Some of the comments felt that martial arts instructors who shouldn't be paid to teach did suggest though that it was okay for, to ask for just enough to cover the expense of teaching, but nothing to make a living off of. Okay, a lot of great points have been made here on both sides and I can certainly see and understand both perspectives, but there is gray area here. First, a very important question to ask is, if martial arts instructors are expected to teach for free because it's an honorable skill, the focus should be on improving others' lives and it shouldn't be traded for a dollar, then why don't we apply the same logic to other honorable industries? School teachers, college professors, tutors, physical therapists, counselors, personal trainers, doctors, nurses, or anyone who works in emergency response. Ideally speaking, medical professionals should keep us healthy. Police officers should keep us safe. Firefighters and paramedics save us from danger. All arguably more honorable than learning martial arts. And we don't question them getting paid, and in some cases and professions, it's often questioned why they aren't paid more. One counter argument to this point that I heard was that in many areas, EMT and firefighters were volunteer and they don't fall under that umbrella. It's a fair point, honestly, but I have two responses to that. First, while in many areas, rescue services are volunteer, there are also many areas where they are still a paid profession, so they do still fall under this consideration. And second, people who volunteer as firefighters, EMT workers, usually do volunteer outside of work hours and have other professions they live off of. Even if they volunteer, they still have to feed a family and pay the bills. Now, there are also two other trends that came up in this poll. The first is that some comments brought up the fact that in some parts of the world, teaching the martial arts was subsidized by the state and it didn't come out of students' pockets. This one was really interesting to me because that actually cuts a little bit deeper into the issue and it branches off to another question. Which is the bigger concern? Somebody getting paid to teach or students having to incur the costs themselves to learn? A lot of people seem to find subsidies acceptable. 
I mean, in that scenario, the instructor is still getting paid to teach for the knowledge. Another interesting thing that I noticed was that almost everyone I talked to who said that the martial arts is an honor and that the knowledge should not be exchanged for money are almost all in the traditional martial arts. I have not really seen this debate come into play in the more contemporary fighting arts. Most people don't question MMA being a business. The UFC and MMA as we know it is first and foremost a sport. Sports industries are 100% profit driven. I have and do work in professional sports and I have seen this firsthand. The venues, organizations, promoters, all make money hand over fist in the MMA industry. Fighters are professionals who train full time and get paid for their fights. Their coaches are paid to train them, people paid to watch it. I haven't really heard many people debate this, which I find interesting because the debate seems almost exclusive to traditional martial arts. So what were the poll results? Honestly, they skewed a lot heavier in one direction than we expected. As of the filming of this episode and from almost a thousand votes cast, 93% felt that instructors should be paid for teaching. 2% said no, they shouldn't. And 5% said that part-time or hobby teachers shouldn't be paid. That's a vast majority who feels that getting paid to teach is not only acceptable, but the right thing to do. Yet I see almost an equal divide amongst the comments. So what does this suggest? To me, it suggests that it's not always such a clear line to define, or perhaps that there are a lot of variables that can change the situation. I personally feel that someone teaching the martial arts should be compensated for their knowledge. We expect it of literally every other industry, and this person has likely spent much of their lifetime, effort, literal blood, sweat, and tears, and invested their own tuition into gaining this knowledge. If someone is running a full-time school, they should be able to cover the expenses of that school and be able to make a living off of it so that they can support their families and continue devoting the time to teaching and passing that knowledge on. But there is a very, very fine line to walk here, mainly the intent of the individual. There is a huge difference between the instructor who genuinely loves their art and wants to support themselves so they can teach it full time and the individual who is more concerned with making a profit and prioritizes money over the value of what they are teaching. A school that charges for classes does not automatically become a McDojo. We've covered the topic of McDojos a few times and there are often unethical practices in play that push schools into that classification. I invite you to check out those episodes. There are links in the description below. In regards to teaching for your instructor, whether you're an advanced student helping out in class or you're working as an assistant instructor, some feel that if you are teaching for your instructor, then you shouldn't charge and that should count towards your teaching hours. I don't disagree, but there is some flexibility in this answer. Are you just assisting in the class while your instructor teaches? Are you jumping in to lead a class once or twice a week? Are you taking a group of underbelts off to the side while your instructor teaches higher ranks? Are you trying to meet teaching hour requirements for belt testing? Or are you put on a regular schedule and expected to teach 10, 20 hours a week or full time? Are you leading classes by yourself? Have you already earned your black belt and met these teaching requirements? Are you still being charged for school tuition while you're teaching? These are all important considerations. If the student is an assistant and is helping out here and there, then I think it's reasonable to expect them to put that time in as a volunteer to gain teaching experience. But if they are put on a full schedule and expected to actually run classes or run the school outside of the normal hours and they'd be attending, then I think it's reasonable to pay them, especially if they are still paying school tuitions themselves. I have experienced both aspects of this. I have volunteered my time and taught, especially when I was younger and helping out with classes. And I have also worked as a part-time instructor. In fact, my first job ever was teaching. I was in high school and I had been training three to four years at this point, And I knew it was time to get a job and actually start working. I loved my karate dojo and I asked my instructor if he was hiring. The funny thing though is at, I was asking in terms of working the front counter, you know, answering the phones, helping register new students, etc. That was what I viewed at the time as a real job. And I assumed that that was what I was going to be doing. He agreed to hire me. And the next thing I know, I'm being trained for the floor and leading classes. My mind short circuited a little bit because I wasn't expecting that kind of responsibility, but they eased us assistant instructors into it. And it wasn't so bad. I didn't go in with the intention of being paid to teach, but my instructor set up full schedules for us and we were expected to teach 10 to 20 hours a week outside of our high school hours. And we were paid minimum wage, a whole 375 an hour at that time. Later, I taught for my second instructor. Um, he came to me with a job offer to work part time. He was running the school by himself, teaching six classes a day and then training MMA fighters after that. So he offered me the job to run classes on some days so that he could catch a breather. I was also hired as by another school that needed help and needed instructors. So I guess during the time of my martial arts experience, I never really questioned being paid to teach because 
it was always just expected and built in. I can see the concern, and I think that every person who commented on this poll gave a valid answer with a reasonable perspective. But there are many variables. Running a school full time is hard work, and most of the time, it doesn't pay that great. You're not gonna get rich off of it unless you do have a gimmick or you start to veer into that questionable territory. And like many other topics that we've covered, it really does come down to specifics and individual situations. I think martial arts instructors should be compensated for their knowledge, as long as the focus is and remains on the passion and quality of the teaching. It really only becomes a problem when money itself becomes the motivation. So as always, I'd love to know where you all stand, if you agree with the results of the poll and what your personal experiences are. And for anyone who still thinks it's unethical for a martial arts teacher to be paid, I ask this, why are you entitled to be taught for free?